Hi, I'm Peggy. Welcome to Headshots by Peggy Presents. This week is Camera Tips for Actors with John Swanbeck. Hello, everyone. I am so excited, John. Every week uh, or every month when you come on, I get so excited. And this is extremely exciting because this is our first um, episode that's actually going to be a podcast and a video. So that's kind of exciting as well. Oh, that's great. I'm glad to, I'm glad to be uh, part of a podcast now, too. That's great. Right? <laughs> so what are we going to talk about today, John? I thought one of your viewers had a question for us. They did. Did you, uh, do you have that text? Because I am so organized that I usually have the questions up here and I forgot to print it out. I'm hoping that you have it. Uh, I can't enlarge it. So it says, um, this is from Gina West. Do you, do I, that sounds familiar to me. I, I wonder if I've met her. Um, says, John, when you think of actors such as Marlon Brando, who studied with Stella Adler, or Robert Duvall with Meisner, or Marilyn Monroe with Chekhov, where did they get their film approach? I'm thinking, this is her saying, I'm thinking any reputable acting company today is teaching ultimately the same acting principles, Stanislavski being the spine, if you will. So where's the missing cinematic film link? Was it a matter of the big studios working with those actors, which is still rare. Two percent, I think she means that two percent of the acting classes out there are camera oriented. And she says, thank you. Um, yes, Gina et al. Uh, that's exactly what it was. Um, before the breakup of the studio system, which I think was the 60s, um, uh, before the breakup of the studio system, the studio system was called, considered to be, and called a factory. And actors hated it because they felt like they didn't have any freedom, but you would get up every day and you would go to your how to walk on camera class, how to stand on camera class, how to sit on camera class, how to talk on camera class, and all, all of these classes having to do with the camera. And then they also had an acting class, but then these actors would go off with Meisner or Stella Adler, what have you. Um, so the studio system brought the cinematic component to the table and their actor process brought the acting process component to the table. And the two actually worked together really, really well. Anyone who's, who likes any movie from the the 60s and before, 50, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, what have you. Um, there are some great performances there. And it's because the camera, the studio was making sure they took care of the camera and the acting process was making sure they took care of the, the heart, the soul, the what have you. Um, and then the studio system broke up and all that was left was the acting process class, which we talk about all the time, and I'm sure Gina probably heard us talking about it, which is why she asked the question. The acting process does not work on camera. It doesn't, I'm not, it's not that it's not good, it's wonderful. It wasn't designed for camera. And it wasn't designed to work on camera, which is why the seven words you never hear in acting class are, and here's why it works on camera. It doesn't. So the studio system broke up and all that was left was the actor's process and there was a period of time, like the early 60s, to the early 70s, when a lot of those actors who had come through the studio system still had the um, experience of being on camera and the, and the, and the training of, for, for being on camera. But now they had no studio dictating what they did. So maybe it was the 70s, maybe it was the mid 60s to mid 70s. It's considered a golden age of sorts in film because there were all these amazing movies and these amazing performances. And it's because for about 10 years after the studio system broke up, a lot of those actors who went through the studio system were still acting, but now they didn't have any restraints. So they still carried the cinematic aspect 
with them, but now in an environment where they could do whatever they want to do, basically. So that's why that's considered sort of a golden time. Unfortunately, they kind of were, you know, they kind of moved on and then they were placed, replaced by actors who had no camera training, but they had the acting process training. And film performances, film performances became sort of, they, 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 they were competing now with like special effects. So all of that happened just at the time special effects came along. And and then, then the actors had a real problem because they were competing with special effects in a time when they don't didn't have cinematic training. So I think today a lot of the cinematic training comes from you just rise through the ranks. You just you know you rise through the ranks. There are, as as Gina points out, a very tiny percentage of places that even talk about the camera. Um, there are a lot of acting classes that are on camera, but pointing a camera at an actor is not teaching them what to do on camera. And standing still on camera is not the same thing as understanding how to use the camera. So she's exactly right. That's exactly what happened. And it's, it's, uh, it's, it's now a situation where actors are just steeped in the acting process, but it doesn't work on camera. So they're kind of, there's a disconnect. Sure. And I think we talk about this a lot. The acting natural and doing things natural is not always interpreted by the camera as natural. So you have to know what makes, how to move and how to work that the camera makes you look natural. And that's, I guess, kind of what she's talking about the missing link that, you know, there was a disconnect and, you know, we talk about it all the time that the actor's process is separate from knowing how to look good on camera. And I, I, I'm really glad that she asked that question. I'm really glad that you gave that really good um, ex exclamation because explanation, I'm sorry, um, because I, I think a lot of people either don't realize that or maybe knew it, but just kind of threw it away, not really consciously thought about. Yeah, actors used to be trained because camera was a new thing. This is how you do it. This is what you do. And then it just became, you know, here we go. And that's also one of the reasons why I tell actors, you should film yourself at least three times a week, do something in front of the camera and then watch it because you will see what you're doing and how it translates on camera. And yes, there's always different camera angles and different camera heights. And if you're setting your camera up wrong, it's you're, you're still not going to get that. But at least you get an idea of what your body looks like on camera. Because sometimes people think, oh, I look super dramatic and, and emotional in the, when I do this. And you don't. You look weird. Um, or you look um, mean. Or you look, you know, whatever it may be. So it's good to know um, how you come across on camera. And the fact that actors job is to be on camera and the fact that actors are very rarely taught how to be on camera is something that you and I talk about all the time because it seems like that should be one of the first things you're taught well yeah you would think so you would think so um I've actually not seriously but occasionally contemplated the idea of bringing back my own little mini studio system where you know it would be every day we do this and every day we do that and then next day we do this next day we do that because um it's amazing to me amazing to both of us how much it's lacking in so much of their work um you know we're all taking instagram photos now and we've all been taking selfies for a long time and there was always you know still still photography before that and when we do a still still photograph whether it's an instagram or a selfie for any other platform or whatever we do certain things mm -hmm. we think certain things we understand what our bodies can and cannot do we think things with our mind very specifically we feel things with our heart very specifically we're actually more in tune with what the camera needs an actor to do by our instagram feed than we are for many uh for many acting classes it's a camera your 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 cell phone camera is a camera it operates the same way as any film camera does for the most part they're all the same in, in that regard and 
yet when then actors come to play a scene, they forgot everything they were doing on Instagram. Um, or anytime they're taking a picture of themselves or, or whatever. Um, even if they take a video of themselves, and there's, there's just a video of themselves and there, there's no script dialogue, of course, they're, they're doing a better job on camera than they do with their acting a lot of the time. Um, exactly and you know I think a lot of times because of social media because of you know Instagram and Snapchat and all these things um, people get this idea of what looks good on camera and even though it is the same process like for instance um, you know that the favorite Instagram pose is you know this and so I see, uh, I, I'm on, um, I just went blank, I'm on Clubhouse and, and people are always saying, hey, will you look at my headshots? And what I find when people get headshots from not headshot photographer, you know, professional headshot photographers is a lot of times the camera angle is super high as if it's an Instagram picture. And um, there's several reasons why that doesn't work for a headshot. I mean, it gives a whole different feel. Um, and same with your self tape. Um, when you're doing a self tape, you need to have your camera level, you know, um, chin chin level, not not up shooting down, um, because it gives you know. If you look at at movies, if you look at TV, they don't have the camera angles coming down unless they're portraying a specific reason but most of it the camera levels are are here um and there's i i could talk for hours about why but um so when you're doing your self tape you need to know these kind of things because it's going to make you look like you belong on the tv show not like you're trying to make some instagram you know um duck face picture for you know for likes um, so these are things that, that people really do need to understand that, that there are simple things that make you look like you belong in, on TV and things that make you look like you're just, I don't know, <laughs> like you don't. Right. No, I think, and I think one thing we might've talked about in the past, I forget, but, um, uh, uh, a lot of times actors will get on camera and they'll, just be sort of straight you know they're looking at the camera it's kind of boxy they're straight right. and, boxy. and they would look so much more like a natural if they just simply angled 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 did some sort of angles mm -hmm. angle because that's what you're going to do when you're on camera and when you're yeah you know, when you're filming exactly uh, and if they did it in their self tapes or even headshots i mean you are you're angling people all the time um, or a lot of times when they get in front of their self tapes, they're like boxy or they go into an audition and they're like boxy, they're square on facing the actor, the other actor completely square and it's kind of flat. Mm -hmm. And if they just angle themselves a little bit here and there, that way and this way, they'll look like a natural because that's the way the camera thinks. Exactly. And so I, I like that. We should do that, John. We should come up with a, the a, a on camera, like daily assignment um, program. <laughs> if we get a bunch of comments, then we'll have we'll be pressured to uh, to put that together. That's a great. As idea. if you and I have nothing else to do. Right. That's let's, right. Let's start a new program. Sitting around twiddling our thumbs. I know. Um, but I think I think it's I think you know the way I think of it is you know you need to, you need to think like the camera. It's not enough just to turn on a camera and point it at you doing your scene. You need to create the way the camera thinks. Position yourself the way the camera thinks, um, and there. I think actors are missing out a whole. A lot of actors are missing out a whole. Like a, like a large realm of possibilities for how what they could do on camera that actors who are working on professional sets every day understand because they live there. Right. So yeah, I think that uh, I think they need to learn to think like the camera. Exactly. And the more you live on camera, the more you watch yourself on camera, the more you see it, the more you, you start realizing it. Instead of just taking it for granted, you start actually looking at it going, oh, 
let me try this. And then you, you know, move your body and do it again and go, oh, wow, that's a big difference. And the thing with the camera is there's a big difference between this and this, like this little slight movements are huge in the camera. Um, you know, a, a slight, you know, hell, head tilt, you know, just these little bitty, it doesn't have to be a huge thing. It's oftentimes just those slight adjustments. Um, you know, think about if you're working with a personal trainer and you're doing something and they're like, no, bring your elbow in, you know, it's just a slight thing, but it, it makes everything work right. And that's, that's how it is with the camera. It's just those slight adjustments that make a huge, huge difference. Yeah. I tell actors to knit in tiny moments, like knit in tiny, yeah. tiny um, because you'll still look like you're doing something. You're doing a lot. You'll still look like you're doing a lot on camera, but it's going to be, it's going to feel much less than what you think you should be doing. Exactly. Exactly. And I, I love, um, I love having these conversations with you because then when I go watch movies, I'm, I, I watch so much more intently and I watch how, wow, they aren't moving. Oh, wow. Look at this. Look at, they're not even like, there are some movies that, you know, they're not moving. They're not even talking and it's so powerful and it, 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 it amazes me. I'm like, John knows what he's talking about. I mean, look at this. <laughs> yeah. It's amazing to me that, and that, that actors and even directors, you know, up and coming directors that they don't watch film and television from that perspective, because you, you'll mention it to them and they'll be, they'll be really surprised at what you're saying. Uh -huh. um, and I do this thing now where, you know, when I, when I start my sessions, my on, my on camera sessions, I'll, I'll screen something, someone's audition a clip from this, a clip from that. And I'll point out uh -huh. not only that they're not moving, but all the different ways that you can creatively create look from the camera's perspective. Um, and people will just be like, wow, that's incredible. I never thought about that. And yet there it is. And it's, 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 you've been watching it in your entire life, but you know, they don't, they don't recognize it. It's really interesting to me that they don't look at it and say, I see this is happening. I see that's not happening. I see this is happening. I see this is not happening. It's really interesting to me. I think we get so caught up in the story, I guess, that, you know, we don't sort of break it, break it down like that. I mean, it's good to watch TV and just, you know, relax and enjoy, you know, things, but this is your job. If you're an actor, this is literally your job. You should study. Um, I mean, you should really watch and, and see what other actors are doing and what uh, award-winning films look like and why, think about why they won awards. Think about why, why um, is this the best actor? Why is this the best film? Why is this the best director? What made all those pieces come together? Right. And really, really watch with intention. Um, I'm all about setting intentions. I think when you get your headshots, you should come in with intention. Like, what are we going to accomplish? I think you should, you know, do your homework. It's fine if you want to go to the, you know, movie and relax. But there are times you should really watch a movie to see what's going on. Or what's not going on. Exactly. Uh, or what's, what's going on and what's not going on. I tell actors all the time. First thing you need to understand is how little you can get away with doing on camera. And the next thing you understand is how much you can get away with while you're doing so little. Once you learn to work in that very tiny confined space, then you realize how explosive you can be. Exactly. And it's because you're creating in that small space that allows you to create something just dynamic and amazing and explosive. Um, it's really interesting how it works. I find it really, really interesting how it works. Um, I, I agree. They should, um, they should do, uh, they, they should, um, and I, I think we've said this before, they should watch something with the volume muted. Mm -hmm. Whatever they're streaming tonight or this week, take 10 minutes and mute the volume. And I guarantee they're gonna say to themselves, no one's moving. No one's doing anything. No one's reacting. Um, and yet it's fascinating what they're watching and you have to, that's what, that's where you need to you need to begin your understanding of how to act on camera right there. 
um, mute the volume and they're doing nothing most of the time except for like you know i'm hitting you and you're hitting me or you know there's some degree of uh -huh. so, you know everything's not, nothing's everything and everything depends on the project but for the most part that's what they're going to say to themselves no one's doing anything um they'll say other things but that'll be the big one i i think we've challenged people to do this before and we've gotten really cool comments so um i'm going to challenge people again um we pick a show and mute it for 10 minutes, set your timer and watch it for 10 minutes. And then in the comments, write down what show you watched and write down what you found. Like, did you, what did you observe in those 10 minutes and uh, give us feedback. And then um, if, if that drums up a question that you wanna ask John, then also add that in the comments. So that's your assignment for this week. <laughs> <laughs> or for this month, but do it tonight while you're thinking about it, because yep. otherwise you're going to forget. So yep. do it, like set a timer and um, watch, mute it, watch 10 minutes, and then comment what you learned from that. Were you like, oh, wow. Or were you like, I don't know, John, they were all over the place. What are you talking about? Or, but you're going to be surprised because I've tried it and I was, I was also yep. shocked. And that's why now without yep. muting it while I'm watching, I, I'm conscious of that. Um, I'm conscious of, you know, how, how people move and don't move. And you think that there's all this going on, but when you really look at it, it's, you know, the camera is really telling the story and the actors, you know what I mean? I, I, I don't want to say that the camera tells a story. The camera does the movement. The actors are telling the story. That's a good way to put it. That's a very good way to put it. Yeah. The, the, the camera is doing the movement. Um, um, I was screening a couple of clips I've screened recently. So I screened Meryl Streep from Devil, Devil Wars Prada. I screened Game of Thrones. I screened Ginny and Georgia, which is this teen drama on Netflix. I have a teenager watching that. It's great. I love it. And I, and I, screened, <laughs> and I screened Aaron Paul's audition from Baking, Breaking Bad. So four completely, I screened Pride and Prejudice, completely, all completely different pieces of material um, with completely different actors. And everything you and I are saying applies to every each time. Other. Each and it never fails. It's the aesthetics of the medium. It has nothing to do with this scene requires it, that scene requires it. it they're the aesthetics of the film medium. Um, and in my head, I would think Game of Thrones is so active and so, right, so right, big, but right. it, it's still when you, I, I'm like trying to play a scene in my head. Um, the, yeah, I can see that. I, I'm now I'm going to have to go rewatch Game of Thrones. Oh, darn, go rewatch Game of Thrones. Right. Um, well, and, you think of Game of it. Thrones, you think of Game of Thrones and you think it's really, really big. Yeah. And that's the that's the story. That's the epicness of it. That's the camera. Most of the time through those seven seasons, people are standing completely still and not using even the amount of volume you and I are using. Wow. And it's stunning. But so that's a good one to study, too. Yeah, that's amazing because I, I love Game of Thrones. And and when you say Game of Thrones, I see action and big and loud and but um, I'm going to do that. I will. Uh, you can call me on it next month when we're having this. I promise I'm going to pull it up and, and I'm going to watch it muted um, because that that's that intrigues me. Even the dragons in Game of Thrones are cinematic. Even they know what they can and cannot do on camera. <laughs> Hopefully we're getting that's, that's cool. Um, I, uh, I was lucky. I, this has nothing to do with this podcast or this video, but I'm going to share it anyway. Um, I got to watch the big dragon fight the last season at, at the Dolby theater, um, at, at the Chinese Dolby theater in Hollywood on the big screen with hundreds of people in the theater. And that had to have been one of the coolest things I've ever seen on screen. Um, in my life. Uh, so I was very fortunate. Uh, it was a television academy event. Right. And uh, it was it was amazing to watch because you know, you watch Game of Thrones on your TV, to see it in a theater, the big fight was was, uh, was pretty amazing. But now I'm going to go watch it muted and see how little movement and how big my 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 mind makes it 
but how little movement it actually is. Um, from now, the here's, the, here's the thing, and this will lead me to something else we can maybe chat about for a second. It's not only technically what you do on camera. It's knowing how to create on camera. The actor's process, those elements, don't work the way actors are taught to put them together. They don't work on camera. You have to rearrange them on camera. And um, uh, there is something very profound and explosive about what those emotions are that they're feeling in Game of Thrones that are bigger, much, much bigger than what they're playing. Um, but there are three things, I think there's, there's, a, there's a number of things, but I'll just give an example. One is um, actors are taught to create a lot of different things, right? So they're taught to create a lot of different things, but on camera, um, you want to create a lot of different things, but you want to play one. So if you create a bunch of things and play one, the camera will find the other nine really, really interesting. Now that's just because that's the way the camera thinks. And if you talk to an actor about that, they're going to think, I can't just play one thing, but you've created 10 things and then you're playing one. Um, so there, there's that. And then there's the idea of like how you communicate to the camera. If there's, and you, you must, of course, you know this from being a headshot photographer. Um, if an actor comes along, whether it's a, a headshot photography session or they're doing this, their self tape or a movie or whatever, um, and they have a bunch of great ideas and they communicate all of those ideas equally to the camera, they're going to wash each other out. Mm -hmm. Right. That's the same in, 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 in when you're doing headshots, you have to sort of communicate the ideas differently to the camera. If you communicate them all, cause you're trying to create complexity, you're going to, they're all going to wash out and you're not going to create anything. And then if you can line them up differently, like I always think like there's a line formation and that's bad because everything washes itself out. And there's a flock formation where you have something at the head of the flock and you communicate those to the camera. This is the same with headshots, right? I mean, you're, you're... I, I, I want, I, because I, this is, I get so passionate about this and, and I don't want to take away from what you're saying, but I want to throw in this. Um, people come in and they say, I want a good headshot. Um, these are the roles, these are the character types, these are the, the types, the looks that I want. And I'm like, no, no, we need to narrow it down. What are we working on now? Um, because even though you, you want an attorney or you, want, you, you, you submit a lot as an attorney, um, there's, an attorney can be a lot of things. What is that to you? But when you narrow it down, then it can focus on that one thing you're going to get a lot more effective because you're in that mindset you're emotionally there the camera's able to pull that out then if you're just like smile i want a good headshot um you've got to and it's the same exactly what you were saying you can't just be like okay i've got to do this 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 and this no pick one and everything else is going to come out of that but you've got to have somebody in front you've got to have that emotion the main thing that you're that's exactly what I tell. I like the way you said that. I'm going to, I'm going to use what you said to portray that to my clients later, sure. because that's exactly what I try to say. And that has nothing to do with standing still. Mm -hmm. That has nothing to do with what the actor's process needs or what the scene needs. It's how the camera thinks. And if actors can even a, on a, even a little bit start to think like the camera thinks, their work is going to be so much more amazing on camera. Oh and they, yeah, and and they can play, they can they can work their actors' process as much as they want. They can uh, do as much as they want with the scene. And I love the actors' process. I work with actors all the time. I'm a writer in my own world, so I have I love words. I'm not saying anything about any of that, but just just sort of just moving those those components around is not going to end up with something on camera. If you can learn to create the way the camera thinks the way you're talking about, whether it's a still still shot or a, 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 you know, a video, um, it'll change your work on camera in a way that just doing a really good job with the scene or doing a really good job with the process could never do.
would never do. Um, so that's, you know, that's, that's, those are the things I like to think about. Um, that's, that's absolutely, that was, that was the for today's episode, I think that was, that was the really good nugget. I mean, there's always so many good nuggets when, when you and I talk, I feel like, uh, that's why I love having John on because we just feed off of each other because we both love the camera. We both understand, right. um, even though you use the camera differently than I use the camera, we both understand the language of the camera. And we both understand that if actors understood the language of the camera, things yeah. would be so, it would change your game. The, um, you know, you get an effective headshot, you get an audition. All right, that's the point, right? You have to have an effective headshot to get that audition. And then you're like, I get all these auditions, but I never book. Okay, so where's the disconnect? You know, why aren't you look? Why aren't you looking the way you want to look on the camera? You need to know that language. Now, I never, ever, ever, ever say that you did anything wrong if you did not book something. That's not how the industry works. It's could be the best performance they ever saw and you looked amazing and you look like you belonged in the movie, but you have red hair and they wanted a blonde. Like we all know it has nothing to do with you, but also take out any, any things that can take away from that. Make sure you know the language of the camera so that you can portray yourself the very best way you possibly can. Right. Um, we are all filmmakers. And I think actors have to think like filmmakers, whether they're getting a headshot done or they're doing a video for something. Um, every once in a while, I think it's raining up. Every once in a while when an actor, um, you know, sort of, sort of comes through my world and I start to communicate about the camera and how they can apply the camera to their work, to, you know, everything we're talking about. And the session will be over and the actor will say, that was amazing. I can't wait until I work with the director so I can do all of that with the director. And I think you've just missed the point. The director's not looking for actors they can show how to do that. The point of an audition is, do you look like you already belong in a movie? And, do you, and, and so the actors can't sort of pawn this off on the director and think that they should just do their work and then... A, a director will somehow make this all work on camera. They're going to get hired a lot more, a lot faster and go a lot further if they can learn, you know, if they can become filmmakers who are actors. Exactly. This is just actors. Um, that is a, they have no idea how important that is. Film directors are looking for actors they can make a movie with, not they can sort of pull a performance out of. Exactly. And it makes it go so much faster and so much easier and so much smoother when you show up and know your job. And then, yes, the director may give you some direction, but it's. Oh, yeah, they want to talk to direction. You. It's not class. <laughs> right, right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, they want to talk to you and have a great conversation and talk story and character. They just don't want to make everything. They just don't want to do, do, your, do your job. <laughs> they don't want to do your job. He, Humans in general are lazy. And by that, I mean, we want to do our job. We don't want to do your job. So you're an actor. You should show up and already know how to do your job. And the director should just have to give you those slight little directions to make everything, you know, work together smoothly. So that's, I, I agree with John 100% when you say mm -hmm. that. Like a director's job is not to teach you how to be an actor. You're an actor. You should show up already knowing that. That's what the audition process is. It's an interview to see if you know how to make a film take work. Although, Peggy, did you just call all directors lazy? Is that what you just No, did? no, I said all humans, all humans. <laughs> I put myself in that too. I, I like it. I like it when I have somebody that comes in to my studio and they're like, this is what looks and types and characters we're going to accomplish today. Boom, 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 boom. This is what this character looks like to me. And this is what I'm wearing. I'm like, I almost feel guilty charging you. You just did all of my work for me. Click, click, we're done. <laughs> that's, that's my ideal client. Um, but I, I, I think as, you know, 
as, um, which I've never found that client yet, by the way, but I'm sure you're out there and I'm sure you've been watching my videos, <laughs> but, um, I, um, you know, I really think that, um, we all need to do the best we can do in our own lane. And that helps the other person do the best they can do. A director is the best director when they're directing great actors. Right. Oh, that's well put. Let's write that down. The other thing actors, just to sort of spin it so they maybe understand it a little better. One of the things actors want from a director is a director who understands the actor's process. So it's like, wait a minute, but you don't want to understand the director's process and what needs to happen on camera, but you want the director to understand your process. Uh, like you're saying, um, we're all filmmakers. This person's a filmmaker who's a headshot photographer. This person's a filmmaker who's a director. This person's a filmmaker who's an actor. This person's a filmmaker who is a DP. I think that's the way we need to think about it. And then everyone has their own unique individual creative process within that understanding. The grip, the every single person involved in the project is just as important as every other person. And the more we understand everybody's process, the more we can help each other and do our job more efficiently. And I think that when we start thinking like filmmakers and we start thinking like we want this project to be the best it can possibly be, then that's when that project goes you know, great because everybody understands that they're a piece of the puzzle. And without me, you don't have this. And without you, we don't have this. And all these things all work together to make a project happen. And that's pretty amazing if you ask me. Yeah, it could really, it, it, it could really change their careers. It could change their lives. It really, really could. Um, they have no idea. Absolutely. John, I love hanging out with you. Is there anything else? Do you have a quote for us? We didn't even get to a John Swanback quote this week. What the heck? I, I, do, have, got one. I do have a quote for you. Yes. Um, okay, let me see if I can remember it. Um, and it's perfectly fitting for what we've been discussing. Um, uh, okay, it goes like this. <laughs> what are you? What are you? What are you creating that the audience could not already get by reading the script themselves? Oh, wow. I like that. Yeah. So when they're doing their work, that's a question they should ask themselves. What are they creating that the audience couldn't get by reading the script themselves? And if you can create that thing, you'll look much more like you belong on camera. It's that, that's how the camera thinks. That's really good. Um, because I do a lot of self tape auditions. I read a lot of scripts. I, you know, at least scenes I read, you know, scenes from scripts. I don't read everything. Um, but I've never articulated that, but that's when, you know, you just recorded somebody's audition. That's amazing is when you read through it, you read through all the notes and then they do the scene and you're like, Oh yeah, I never thought of that. Yeah. That's the most interesting ideas you can create on camera lie within that question. That was, as always, John, blew it away. That was good. That yeah, was that was great. Good. So, and that's what, that's what you as an actor bring to the table is when you read those words, what does that mean to you and how do you portray that? I think that's, that's literally the job of an actor, right? Absolutely to create. That was awesome. Cool. The whole sh this was awesome to be with you here today. I always love this. This is my, this is my favorite week of the month is uh, camera tips for actors and hanging out with John. Mine too. Mine too. Okay, guys, don't forget, we gave you an assignment, 10 minutes on mute and put in the comments what you watched and what you thought. Like, was it like impactful? Are we full of, you know, craziness or do you think that yeah this was this was amazing and I bet you you are going to be like me and you're going to start watching tv differently and start noticing um really good tv really good movies they don't do a lot <laughs> it's it's uh, it's amazing 
Um, so that's your, that's your challenge for the week. Um, John is on Instagram every single day, leaves an amazing quote. You are on Facebook. You are on Clubhouse. You are on Twitter. On TikTok too. And TikTok. You're on TikTok. You're on TikTok. I, I've kind of gotten lazy on TikTok. I should probably get back in there. Um, so all of your links are down below in this description. And make sure you follow John everywhere. Grab a copy of his book and uh, you will not regret it. Um, he has tons, tons, tons of great information. The um, daily quotes uh, are, are just I love them. That's actually how I met John is one of his quotes. I messaged him. I was like, oh my God, you're a genius. Can I steal this quote? And uh, then we've, we've had a friendship for several years because of that. So thank you, John, for all of your brilliant quotes. Um, I think that's it, guys. I think we actually, um, I think we had a great show. Did you want to add anything before I close this up? No, but thank you, Gina, for asking us that question. Gina West, thank you. Gina. Absolutely, and please leave questions. We love questions. And a, a few months ago, we did a Q and A. It was just all questions, and we start getting questions in, and we'll do another Q and A because that was fun. Uh, made us both. We didn't read the questions before. We were like put each other on the spot. So it was it was a lot of fun. Um, so anyway, thank you guys. Uh, make sure that you follow me, um, subscribe to this podcast, subscribe to the YouTube channel if you're watching the video form. Um, make sure that you share this with everyone you know. Most importantly, have an amazing week. I'll see you next week. Bye, everyone. Bye. Text or call today so that we can get you effective headshots that you can use as part of your marketing strategy. Headshots by Peggy, how can I help you?